guys, this is Wences. Welcome back to my channel where we talk about personal development for INFJs and how to create an epic life on your terms. Today we're talking about INFJ survival skills. And if you're an INFJ, you know that these survival skills are amazing because we have been in situations where we say, okay, others would have cracked under this pressure. Others would have never been able to make it. But we have to consider the fact that we put ourselves in that situation as well. So there are such great qualities to our survival skills. And once we understand what they are, we can then find a way to say, how am I going to use those exact skills to thrive and not just to survive? And this is so much easier said than done because we've all been there. We all want to thrive. There's nobody who says, okay, I love just barely make it by. And I'm not just talking about making it by as in, you know, financially or being able to provide for your livelihood or whatever it is. I'm talking about barely making it by and how happy you are, what great of a life you can create for yourself. So many of us are just scratching on the surface of how great of a life we can experience. It's like, I almost have what I wanted. I just have to do this one more thing. And there is a logic behind it. And once we understand how it functions, we can transform all of that. Just remove those parts that are not working and use those amazing skills to thrive like never before. Before we get started, I want to remind you that the bootcamp launches on Saturday, February 27th. It will be the first bootcamp of 2021. So come join us. You find the link to the bootcamp page in the description. I've spent so much time analyzing our survival skills. This is probably one of the first things I started looking into when I began my INFJ epic life journey because I knew that there is so much strength in it. I knew that I could take so much. And I said to myself, I have to find a way to transform this power. So it's not just about keeping my head above water. It can't be all about that. But why is that? Well, on the one hand, we do have these amazing skills. And what do I mean with the skills? With these skills, I mean that we can hold on to a vision that is different than reality. We can hold on to something, although we don't have the reality mirroring back to us that it has already happened. And this is such an amazing quality because it will help us to overcome bullies. It will help us to overcome circumstances that are not in our advantage. And this is what is necessary if we want to continue on our path to an epic life. But on the other hand, why is it then so often that we get into situations where we do feel like our life is intense, but it's painfully intense. It's like I'm doing all I can and nobody understands me no matter who I want to be in my life. That person never wants to. If I want that job, the people there don't recognize what I can offer. And so you get into this vicious cycle where yes, you feel you're using all those skills. You feel that you have the power, but all you can do with that power is just barely survive. The reason why we use it to survival is because we have a threshold of how well we allow ourselves to feel. We all have that. It's a default state. It's a comfort zone and a comfort zone doesn't have to be something that is, you know, amazing. A comfort zone is just something that we're used to. If you have been brought up in a household where there was a lot of yelling, you'll probably feel comfortable there. You won't feel comfortable in an environment where it's peaceful, where everything is great and where you get to relax. If you have been continuously rejected as a child, for example, you will automatically seek people in your life who also reject you. You start liking people who by default don't want to be around you. That's a given. And then you tell yourself, well, but I can't just back down from what I want. When in the end, you're not even asking for the bare minimum. And this goes to jobs. This goes to relationships. There are so many aspects to this. So for example, you say, well, I need somebody who's cool or I need somebody who is in this scene. But you're not even thinking about having somebody in your life who is mentally stable, who has a growth mindset, who wants to grow with you and who you can be yourself around. Somebody that you don't have to coach somebody that you don't have to inspire, but somebody who wants to be your partner. So many of these things are holding us aback and they're the reason why we have this upper limit, this upper limit that keeps us comfortable wherever we are at. And so you might ask, okay, but how does this apply to be an 
in an INFJ? I'll tell you. I have a couple of friends who are ESTPs or ISTPs, so types with a really strong sense of extroverted sensing. For them, very often you'll find that they also feel like they have to give more than anybody else in that regard. So my ISFP friend, for example, she is able to withstand any kind of weather. She is able to work late night shifts. So everything that is physically draining, she feels like she has to take on because she knows that she has strong skills in this and that she has to prove her worth mainly to herself by going the extra mile. It isn't okay that everybody else says, okay, I'm not gonna stand in this weather for more than two hours. And she says, well, I have to be able to withstand five hours. You will see this with INFJs too. All your survival skills, everything that you feel you have to endure, you have to endure because you feel like you can take so much more than others. So with the SE types, it might be physical strength. For us INFJs, it's this discrepancy. It's our vision. It's NI, introverted intuition. So let me explain this. Introverted intuition helps us to build a reality, a dream world outside of what is happening in the real world. That is it by default. Introverted intuition isn't us planning for the future. Introverted intuition isn't us understanding others and then creating an image around it. These are all things we can do with introverted intuition, but mainly it's a parallel reality outside of what's going on. So we have an image of this is what I feel like, this is how I create my world, and it doesn't have to be reflected back. We have that skill. And that's a skill that we INFJs have so strongly in comparison to others, when other types are much more likely to be influenced by their reality. So how do we prove to ourselves over and over again that we are good people, that we got what it takes, that we are worth loving, or whatever it is that we human beings think we have to have in our life, that we have to get from other people. It's so unfair and unkind to talk to ourselves like, okay, you should be able to go through life all by yourself. You don't need anybody. You don't need other people's approval. Yeah, on some level, we want to get to a point where we give ourselves the biggest approval ever. We we want to be at a place where we are the lead character of our movie. But we also have to take into consideration that we have been living for decades in an environment with a mindset that wasn't beneficial to our greatest happiness. It's not our fault, but now when we take control of it, we need to be okay with where we're at, we need to be kind with ourselves, not be a bully towards ourselves, and then start small. So why am I saying this? I'm saying this because we can only be kind to ourselves if we also recognize where our shortcomings are. And I'm not talking about shortcomings, why you aren't good enough for other people. I'm saying shortcomings towards ourselves in what areas we're not being our best friend. So if we still have to prove to ourselves that we're good enough, we are gonna go the extra mile and we will go it in areas where we are by default better than others. I think it's easier if I have this comparison with the SE types. The SE types are stronger than most types. So they feel like they have to do more, they have to endure more than others because through that they prove their superiority and only if they're superior in something, they will be loved. You know, I'm talking in extremes here. I'm not saying every SE type is like that. I'm saying from a human standpoint where we're not perfect, where we subconsciously seek out approval, love, just acceptance altogether, this happens if we're not careful. For us, it plays out in our NI. We have to withstand more discrepancy between reality and what we want. We have to go for relationships that are even more difficult to realize. I mean, how many INFJs have I met that have had situations where they had relationships overseas, where there was like really long distance, where there were so many things that were playing against them, where the relationship was based on just a short situation. I have experienced this myself and I have talked to so many INFJs as well. And I I have not only seen this in relationships, I have seen this with parents, I've seen this with job situations where you say, okay, I just have to push through. I have to be able to maintain this image of I'm good, although my reality tells me over and over again, this is not the place for you. If you have a person in your life and you're interested in that person and that person continuously tells you, I'm not interested, I'm not interested and so on, we hold on. We hold on because we have to prove to ourselves, my intuition is stronger than this. My intuition tells me there is a connection. We had a connection. I'm going to hold on to that truth. And we're not willing to let that go. 
And on top of that, we have proven to ourselves that we are so much better than others in that regard. Again, this is a generalization. I'm not saying every INFJ is better at this than any other type, but in general, we can hold on to a vision much longer than the average person who isn't an INFJ. So because you've proven to yourself that you can do this and because you've proven to yourself that in so many cases you were right, you go overboard. You stay in situations that aren't healthy for you. How an ESTP, for example, might stay up for days on end because they feel like, okay, I have to prove to myself that, you know, I'm strong enough. I'm able to survive. That makes me something special. That proves to the outside world that I'm worthy. So it all comes back to self-worth. So how do we as INFJs use this information to our benefit? So we know the skill. We also know how to apply it to our benefit, which is we hold on to a vision. Although reality doesn't show us yet that this is what is going to happen, we hold on to that. And because of that, reality changes. A good example is, for example, me with this channel. When I started, nobody understood this. The entire community was really small. Everybody was all about, okay, poor me. You know, and I come in and I'm like, okay, we're going to have an empowered community here. We're going to be INFJ warriors. We're going to change the entire course of this community. And we're going to make this an epic ride. My friends didn't understand what I was talking about. The people at my work were making fun of me. If I was telling them that I remember like telling people, oh, look, I have this channel and everything they said was like, oh, okay, I think you just uh, were scratching your face or you were sitting so weirdly. So there wasn't any positive feedback that kept me going. But I knew I had this vision and although reality doesn't represent that yet, I know that I as an INFJ can hold on to the vision despite reality showing me anything different. And now I do get to live my dream life. Now I get to do this full time. I don't have to work anymore. You know, I'm helping others, which is my biggest passion in life. So it all worked out because I used those survival skills. But how was I able to turn those survival skills into thriving skills? Because it's not just my business that changed. It's also my relationships. My husband is completely different than everybody that I was going for when I was younger, when I was going through my survival skills. I was looking for people who could never give me what I wanted. They would have never been able to talk to me in the ways that are important to me. I thought they would, but the reality was different, right? There was a discrepancy. I had this vision of, oh, there are these amazing people, but whatever they showed me in real life, like how I always say externally observable facts, it was, I don't understand you. We're completely different. I will never be able to be your partner at your side. So I turned everything in my life around. Of course, I use the five pillars to an epic life. You know, uh, you can download the poster to get a first glimpse or, you know, join the boot camp. But without going into detail on this, the way I turned my survival skills into thriving skills was to understand I will use the fact that I have a vision that is different than reality, but I will not allow my default states to say the same. And the way I do that is to define what I want and to put action behind it. And the way I do that is that I hold on to a vision without having something that I project it onto. Meaning if I have this thing, okay, I need to make it work with that person. I need to make that person understand what I'm about. You are always at the mercy of another person. If you say, I have to prove to my boss that I'm doing a good job. You're always at the mercy of what your boss thinks of you. And so of course you are continuously going going to work and work and work, show up and have this vision in front of you that you will at one day feel worthy because your boss will think you're worthy because that guy or that girl will think you're worthy. And you don't even understand that you're doing this. I mean, we're smart people. Nobody of us would ever feel like if we knew this consciously that we would go for this. This is happening on a subconscious level, but that's why we talk about it. So we recognize those patterns because once you know this, you stop looking for that particular person's opinion. You stop looking for what your boss tells you. What you do is you say the following. I want somebody in my life who shows me through their actions. So through reality that, you know, they cherish the way I talk. They continuously choose me. I want a boss, for example, 
who wants to see me win. And if the boss that I'm at right now doesn't show me that, I'm not going to pretend that at some point he or she will because I have shown up even more. I have put even more into my vision and then at some point it miraculously works. We will stop this altogether. We don't have to prove how strong our NI is. I used to understand my friends on such a deep level. I used to know everything that my best friend liked, her music taste, what things made her sad. Like I was so invested in that because I was projecting all my vision of how I will feel through our relationship. And this is with my best friend, just an example. It applied to my entire life. Now I don't know that much because I'm not going overboard with my NI. Just like the extroverted sensing type who doesn't need to stay up for four days in a row to prove to him or herself that he or she is worthy. They know they're strong in this suit, but they're not going to do it to a point where you're just wrecking yourself. You have a vision and you use the skills you have to thrive, not to survive. So you cut out everything on the outside that tells you, I'm not giving this to you. So you're cutting out people who show you, I'm not interested. I'm not going to give you the worst that you're looking for. If we continuously want that person to give us this feeling of being worthy, we're going to continue that conversation. We're going to continue that relationship. But if we decide I am worthy the way I am in all aspects of life, and I'm not going to go out and prove that to anybody, you are going to choose different steps. You going to decide, okay, what is the next thing I can do to make myself feel better about myself? So I'm proud of myself. So no matter what other people say, I don't care because I know I'm doing so well for myself. This is where we want to get to. This is the vision we want to prove to ourselves. And we do this by understanding that I'm not going to change myself in order to get somebody else's acceptance. I'm not going to get that anyway, right? I'm not going to get that because you'll always have to give up parts of yourself. And we want to be liked for who we really are. We want to have success through our gifts and not by how we can show up so others like us. So for example, in this part of relationships, instead of saying, okay, that person has to like me, we decide I deserve somebody who chooses me right away. And I'm going to continue to look until I found that person who has that initial reaction towards me. That other stuff, I'm not going to even spend my time on it because I already know this isn't bringing me to where I want. My vision is key. And if my reality doesn't reflect that, I will change my reality. I'm not going to say, okay, I need you to understand this. We don't care. We give ourselves this value and then you turn all of those skills of being able to hold on to that vision to a superpower because then you're not just using it to stay at your default state. You are not using it to prove your self-worth to yourself. You're doing this because you can and you're doing this because it's fun. And before you know it, you've turned all of those survival skills into the best thriving skills you can ever imagine. Your vision is your superpower. Don't use it to barely keep your head above water. Remember guys, if you want to take the next step, then join the bootcamp. It's a couple more days. We don't have late admissions, so use this last chance. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. And if you want to watch another video now that is in alignment with today's topic, then watch the video on INFJ Phoenix rising from the ashes. Like always guys, I wish you a wonderful day, a great week, and I'll talk to you next time.